Well, it's finally here. The first update for the Galaxy S24 series, that's the Galaxy S24 Ultra. 1A version 6.1, 746 megabytes. Security patch level is from the 1st of February, just in time to still say that we got it in February. Now guys, let me try to set something straight. Never buy a phone or any other technological product just on the base of some promises. If somebody tells you that they're gonna sell you something and they're gonna make it better in one month or two months, five months, don't fall for this, right? Um, also, there is this other part. A lot of users out there was trying to blame the reviewers that the reviewers were using the phones with uh, out-of-the-box pre-release firmware. A lot of the reviewers, like myself included, we are buying our phones with our own money. Nobody's sending those phones to us. Nobody's just giving us money to buy those phones. So we are just spending money out of our own pocket to buy those phones. And um, yeah, just as you or you or you are gonna do, like we go to the store and we buy it. So this isn't something like a pre-release firmware. This is really the firmware that the phone was shipped with. There aren't such things as magical updates. I know you read Twitter, you read Reddit, you, you read Samsung members and then you get hyped and you think that, you know, the next update is gonna kill it. No, no. I mean, it's time to grow up, right? And understand that there aren't things like magical updates. So of course, this is not a magical update. It's just the first update. And we know we have a history at Samsung. We know that they're trying to optimize things in time. We know that there are shipping products that are half-baked sometimes, but it's not only Samsung. I think Apple, Xiaomi, Oppo, everybody is just doing this. They are trying to get on top of the release cycle every year, a new form, and you know how it goes. So this is it, guys. Like there is certainly no magic involved. And I'm going to now review this firmware for you. I'm gonna start with the usual test that I'm doing. Right now, just is going to be a test about fluidity. And by the way, guys, I never had issues with this update or even with the previous update on my S24 Ultra. It's really rock, rock solid. And I only hope that once One a 6.1 is released for the S23 Ultra and the S22 and etc., it will deliver the very, very same performance. It's very stable, almost no luck and no issues whatsoever. So now it's time to check the notifications and the quick panels. See, like everything's so smooth, guys, right? And I know that this is something that should come really with this phone stock, but this was not the case with most of the recent Samsung phones and the experience. So this here is the quick settings. This here is all the notifications. We can try to kill some down. It works really like a charm. Boom, now I'm killing all the notifications. Recent menu guys, see, no status at all. Just works very nice and very pleasant. I'm gonna kill everything here as well. Now I'm gonna go there to access Google. All right, there was a slow thinking moment, but no issues, right? Finally, very nice and smooth execution. And this here, guys, is the browsing experience, all right? So going back to my home screen, one more time, absolutely flawless. This is the navigation through all my home screens. It works really the way it should. This here is now entering the app drawer and also all the search menus, right? Not a problem at all, guys. So finally, I can say One i 6.1 really is delivering that great performance that we kind of expected all the way along from brands like Samsung in their S series and not S, of course, A as well. Now, let's try to do some photo opening and closing. You can see some very nice blur applied on top of this. And this happens every time you also try to scroll down and get your notification. We really, really very visually pleasing. Now, let's try to open some applications. I'm gonna start with Telegram, all right? Open Telegram, scroll, close it, all right? And by the way, guys, see, there is this new animation. I compared One UI 6.1 with One UI 6. The moment you open an app, you scroll down, you exit, there is this bouncy animation. It is bouncier, it zooms more in and out compared to One UI 6. Let me open also Messenger, all right? I wait for the app to load, go outside, no start at all. Let's open Facebook, all right? I'm just gonna scroll, exit, no start at all. Now let's open also Instagram, all right? Let's try to scroll. Now very important the moment I initiate here this movement to just get access to uh, the camera and the viewfinder because this here, guys, is for sure running on 60 hertz, so this is 120. The moment I go and boom, do like this, we enter 60 hertz and this change was not always very pleasant on some of the other phones. And by the way, you notice correctly, right? 
some pictures like this one, for example, will pop up in HDR, right? And this is very, very good. Like this is one of the things I like about the S24 Ultra. They're not very big upgrades. So it's a lot of small incremental stuff, but it's there and you can for sure see like even the moment I just crawl through a picture with HDR, it's going to really pop up like this. All right, now let's open Twitter, wait for Twitter to load. Okay, and now just, just go on my timeline and do some scrolling. All right, yep, you see how it goes, guys, right? It is really what it is, and I know it might be better on iOS, uh, but I think it's really peak Android. And because I wanna do a full test, I'm also gonna test the edge bar, so see how smooth it is, not a problem at all, like with all the animations. And even if I'm trying to access the volume rocker, boom, everything's so nice, so smooth. I go in, I go out, and we have this very nice and um, zooming background. It really works. Now guys, let's try to see what the widgets are doing. So I'm gonna open the weather one. All right, very beautiful animations here. Exit one more time, boom. That's gonna be this very beautiful One UI style animation. So this works quite nicely. I have another one, by the way, and um, this time that's Spotify. The problem with Spotify is that sometimes, guys, there's gonna be this issue here. See, right now I think it's okay, but the moment I enter and exit, sometimes the closing animation is gonna be weird. I don't see too many people overreacting about it, so I'll just think, okay, guys, listen. This is probably what it is, so it's not that bad at all. And now with that said, guys, gonna go inside and back to the edge bar. Gonna go inside of the systems, and I wanna show you something interesting. There is the security and privacy, right? Very important, guys, click here, updates. Well, because the security update is from the 1st of February, but the Google Play system update is still from July. So right now, that's the proper place to check. And yeah, we were able to find new updates. So. Google Play System Update is available. So right now I'm gonna download it. Sometimes, guys, you need to do this one more time to just make sure that you're using the latest update and then hopefully your phone will get also these Google services updated to the very last stage. Now, why isn't this bundle with the other update? Don't ask me, right? But right now I'm always going inside and checking for that because I just wanna be current with all my updates, the security one, etc. So. After the update is installed, we have to reboot the phone. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna check one more time and see if that's it. If not, we repeat the procedure and then I can continue with my other testing. Phone restarted, so I'm just going to repeat the process. I'm gonna go inside my settings. I'm gonna head here to the security and privacy. I'm gonna hit update. And guys, now the Google Play system update is from the 1st of January. So I'm gonna check for another update, hoping to get another update. Well, no, my device is up to date. Also, something that guys, I encourage you to do every time you do a firmware update, just open the Good Guardians. If you don't have Good Guardians, go download it from the Samsung store. So this is a standard suit with a lot of utilities that can help you to not only boost your performance, right? But also, right, monitor, your battery usage, battery temps, and also guys allow you to even change the thermal threshold. There is even something called Thermal Guardian that allows you to put the thermal threshold settings on your phone. As you can see, the Good Guardians is something like the Good Lock is a manager for all these things like the battery tracker, battery guardian, the Galaxy App Booster, and etc. etc. But we need to click individually and it will redirect us to the Galaxy Store where we can install them. So my advice to you is guys install it and specifically for firmware updates, every time when your phone has updated, click on optimize now, and you can, by the way, only choose to optimize applications that are used in the last 30 days. In my case, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit optimize now, and you're gonna see how this works. This really will help you maintain your phone in a better position. You're done here, let's try keep testing. And I will now in the next test see what happens if I multi-open two of my favorite apps. This here is gonna be YouTube and Samsung's browser. You can just see it works absolutely like a charm. By the way, you know that you can also do like this and try to put those applications in a windowed mode. You can also try to move them so you can move the whole bar and you can click this and they will just go back to the previous mode, all right? So as simple as this. Now guys, let's try to address something about this update. A lot of people referring to this update being the magical update, me telling, hey guys, we have to grow up, right? I'm not saying that the vendors should not optimize their stuff, but let's not just say magical update. This doesn't make any sense. 
and of course a lot of people now are focused on the camera i have some samples i wanted to show to you but i've also ordered the xiaomi 14 ultra which is you know sony li t1 in sensor like really one of the greatest camera phones for this year and when this phone arrives i'm going to compare the s24 ultra with the xiaomi 14 ultra with the iphone 15 pro max and this is how we're gonna know what Samsung did because I did the very same thing with the Oppo Find X7 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max while using here this normal January update. Let's start with one picture shot at 1x, this here is 5x, this is 10x, I would say still very nice results, then we have 30x and we have 100x and this time I think it's okay. Again, here we're starting from 5x, then we have 10x, right? 10x is this critical thing where a lot of S21, 22 and 23 users will say that the 10x from the S24 Ultra is sometimes softer and for sure it's a digital crop guys from the 5x so it's not really a pure optical zoom and this is why Samsung or like Apple are telling it yeah this is optical like quality. Then I have 30x which I think still is okay and then guys something happens and 100x I did a few shots like by the way this gentleman going to the toilet I did a few shots um yeah I'm not sure I think uh, that the 100 shots in the February update might have degraded but it is what it is so one more time guys let's start with the 5x you believe that the 5x shot has a very nice color rendition to it the moment we go to 10x we can see that there is a change in the color of the green grass here so a bit more on the cooler side then guys we have 30x which i would still say it's nice although not not so usable if you want to crop this not good if you don't want to pixel peep 30x is nice and then 100x which is still oh my god giving me some horror thoughts i'm not sure why one more time now this is a dog moving guys the dog moving in 5x by the way no much of a blur which is nice and then try to zoom in a bit you can see 30x so in terms of camera right again don't put all your horses on this magical update and uh, now it's also time to discuss about the battery because right now i'm gonna show you some real-time results i'm taking usually the phone in the morning at like 7 30 something so right now i am already below 50 percent and if i am to click here on the setting you're gonna see my screen on time was two hours and 25 but it was not only in wi-fi of course i got some mixed usage some Facebook, some always on display, Telegram. I have a feeling though that the battery life specifically for me isn't that great, nice. And I'm not sure why, right? This is also reading in the morning, 66%, and I was only doing like one hour and 38. And I can also show you what happens yesterday when I was like almost with 5% fall dying. I only got four hours 36 and with this specific type of usage I was able to get more than six hours. This really pisses me off. I need more time to confirm that with my usage and the February update something apparently might went wrong. I'm not sure at the moment. Uh, so if you also do use the S24 Ultra and you have the February update, let me know what you think down below in the comments. And now with that said guys, I want to run a Geekbench and see the results we're going to get. But before that, let me show the history. On the 18th of February, I ran it and I got 2200 and 6700. Now it's going to be interesting to see what is going to happen when I do run it on the February update. 2238 single core score and 6935 which is almost 7000 and i'm really happy guys why well it, it's more and so much and so often on the s23 ultra while i was updating the firmware right and of course waiting for the phone to cool down etc i was doing this kind of benchmark specifically the gigabench was always like giving me inconsistent results so i'm really happy that i got something that i do believe is quite useful yes you got this correctly we are also going to run a wildlife extreme to just check the scores on that type of test here are the results so the overall score is 4535 with the average frame rate of 27.16 which i think is actually not that bad at all guys so it seems to be that the february firmware is still stable enough of course that's a brand new phone no terrain wear whatsoever i just have a few remarks first thing is there is no clear indication that the camera somehow got better right i even have some feelings that uh, after a certain zoom level 
things are not looking great compared to the gen update um, then the second observation that i do have is with the battery life i am not 100 convinced that i'm getting more battery the same type of usage uh, but it's what it is it could be related to many factors i don't have by the way that many applications so these are things for which i'm going to still look on a daily basis guys thank you so much for watching and stay safe vst over and bye